welcome back to the lecture number 5 on searching algorithms so in this lecture we will have a close look at designing and analyzing different searching algorithms we will look at the intelligent search algorithm that takes almost a constant time for searching an element and it works just like a kingfisher bird so how does a kingfisher bird it keeps on flying and then as soon as it sees the target, it dips into the water and comes out with a fish in its beak. So same way, we will try to uh, see uh, intelligent search algorithm in the similar manner. We will also look into some interesting questions related to improving the performance of searching algorithm. So let us begin the presentation. <clears throat> so now, Okay, the first uh, algorithm which we are going to discuss is about the sequential search in an unsorted set. So, given an unsorted set, okay, given uh, some n, uh, n elements and we need to sequentially search and find it out whether the element is present or not. So, the input to, your, uh, to our algorithm is unsorted set of distinct elements and the search element will be given that is the key which we need to search and the output would be that whether the element is found or the element is not found. So in a very simple manner we can write the algorithm for this particular idea that um, let us scan all the elements so we write a for loop for i equal to 1 to n do right if a of i a of i is the array element right the a of i is equal to the key then we say that the element is found and you abort the algorithm else if the element is a of i is not equal to the key then you keep on searching inside the array right by uh, so as the i gets incremented the elements also uh, keep on the right uh, moving and then we search for the key element so if the element is not found up to n then we we send uh, we say the message that it is not found and we abort the algorithm so this is the uh, key behind so now let us try to analyze this particular algorithm uh, searching algorithm right so there are two possibilities in this case uh, one number one is the successful search and the number two is the unsuccessful search so in the successful search right the best case would be when the first element is equal to the key element right we exactly the first match is with the key element so that is the best case and now in successful search what would be the worst case the worst case would be that we go to the end of the array right when nth element is equal to the key right when the nth element is equal to key this is the uh, worst case for the successful search whereas on the other hand for the unsuccessful search the best case is equal to the worst case because we have gone all, uh, gone through the elements each and every element of the array and we have found out that the element the key element does not exist so this would happen only after n search and uh, we can see that the successful search algorithm the best case omega 1 to go of n algorithm whereas the unsuccessful search is a theta n algorithm because here the best case and the worst case efficiency remains the same so it is a theta n algorithm so overall what we can say that the searching the sequential search algorithm is omega 1 to o of n algorithm and uh, uh, we have already derived the time complexity for um, right average time complexity for searching an uh, element right so we have already worked that out worked out right so now uh, the second uh, algorithm the second version of the searching algorithm is a sequential search in a sorted set so now in the second algorithm the given uh, the uh, array element right the array, array elements are sorted in some sequence so here we'll assume that it is sorted in the ascending order so now the sorted set of distinct element is given right and we are also given the search element which is the key so now the output uh, is whether we have to say whether it is found or not found right so now uh, let us take these eight elements 12 18 22 26 28 30 32 34 right and now uh, 
uh, let us take the uh, key element as six. We want to search six inside this particular array. So we note that the uh, the key element is because this is sorted sequence. In the first comparison, we come to know that the key element that is the element six is lesser than the first element. So it is an unsuccessful exit after the first comparison, right? So now if the key is 36, right? If the key is 36, now we begin from 12, we go to 18, 22, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, and 36, right? Our key element is 36. So it is an unsuccessful exit after last comparison. So this is an, uh, this is a O of N, right? This takes O of N and this takes omega of key equal to six days. Say so it takes uh, omega of one, right? The time complexity. Now, if we say that key is equal to 27, so it is an unsuccessful exit, but the exit happens not at the end of the um, array, but exit happens when the element is in the array is greater than the key element, right? So in this case, 26, right? We start searching from 12, 18, 22, 26. But, but when we reach 28, we come to know that 27 is already lesser than um, this 28. If it exists, then it should exist before 28. So uh, it is an unsuccessful exit when A of 8 is equals to A of i is equal to 28. So both successful and unsuccessful demonstrate omega 1 to uh, big O of n algorithm. So now related to this, you can also derive an expression for average computing time that is equiprobable exit from all possible locations. So here, um, here we uh, here we can see that uh, there are there are total two n minus one exit options, right? So here there are two n minus one exit options. So exit options for successful, right? Search successfully finding the element and also not finding the element. So both it includes and it is two n minus one exit options. So uh, the algorithm number three, right? So the algorithm number three here, what we do is that the algorithm remains the same, right? But what we do is that we try to apply our intelligence. The intelligence is to go up, uh, like uh, it is to up to search or it is a down to search. So we'll see that scenario where, so the here, the um, assumption is that elements are uh, given in a sorted sequence. So we are taking the same eight elements which we had taken earlier. And now, if the key is nearer to the start end, okay, that is the 12, then employ up to search, right? So given if the key is given, you simply compare the key with the first element, right? And if it if it is near to this first element, then you employ up to search. You start from uh, you you start from 12, and then you go on searching the element. For example, if key is equal to 16, then successful search right then search from start end yeah because 16 is very near to 12 then it says that the search should start from the uh, beginning if the key is near nearer to the finish end then employ down to search right then employ the down to search that is the idea so now uh, let us take the example key is equal to 30 so when key is equal to 30 30 is not nearer to 12 right it is ne more nearer to 34 so we'll start from the finish end. we start searching from 34 and we come back right we come back right so that is the um, down to search so these are um, this is the algorithm and design and implement the algorithm and profile it comment the expression for upper bound and lower bound so you need to um, modify the existing algorithm right the previous algorithm for up to and down to search so see the what is the time complexity uh, for the best case and the worst case. Now, uh, here we have the algorithm. The fourth search algorithm is the binary search algorithm for a sorted sequence. So, this is a very popular um, uh, algorithm uh, which you have already learned in the data structure class. So, the whole idea is that given a sorted um, uh, array, you divide the array into two parts. You find out the middle element in the array and if the middle element is if the if the key element right the key which you want to search is lesser than the mid element then it is very sure that the element exists in the first half right the first half of the array and you neglect the second half whereas if the 
a mid element if the key element is greater than the mid element then it is guaranteed that the element if it exists that exists in the second part of the array and second half of the array you remove you neglect the first half right so that is the idea here so similarly that process will repeat dividing the array into half will repeat and uh, uh, you get a log n complexity o of log n in the worst case so this we will not discuss it we will take it up later so a very important uh, final algorithm is uh, searching algorithm is a kingfisher search algorithm or intelligent search algorithm so as i already uh, introduced this idea in the beginning of the lecture i will i will um, uh, say it again that uh, this algorithm works in the same in the fashion the kingfisher bird search for the fish right so the what does the kingfisher do the kingfisher keeps on flying right above the water and as soon as it sees the target it immediately dips it inside the water and it is guaranteed that 99% or 100% guaranteed that it will come out with a fish in its beak right so that is the uh, that is the um, efficiency of this particular algorithm so in the same fashion we are given a sorted sequence of array now we given a key element so we need to intelligently right intelligently derive some learning or derive some a formula such a way that we land up to the almost exact position almost exact position or at least nearer to the uh, element right nearer to the element. we will see such kind of uh, algorithm in today's lecture right so let us begin the discussion so uh, the algorithm an efficient strategy uh, search strategy right so uh, it is an efficient search strategy now let the locations be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 for eight elements so they are 12, 18, 22, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34. So this is a sorted sequence. We already we have already dealt with these elements. So now I ask you a question. Is it possible to land on the most probable location to search a key? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible, right? Such as if the key is 31, if I ask you to search 31, is it possible to start the search from the location number 6 or location number 7 right usually what happens is that when we are given a key either we start from the beginning of the array or at the end of the array this is the uh, this is the idea but now i am asking whether given element is 31 can i start searching at from the 6th location or from the 7th location is it possible yes it is possible it can be possible if the nature of the input data can be understood okay so this knowledge should be available Understanding the nature of the input data should be possible because the data set is created once in the beginning because the data set is created once in the beginning and searching is done frequently on the database. So the same strategy is being applied by Google search, right? So what does Google search do? Google search crawls through the different websites and it arranges the data as per its requirement and then it uh, arranges in a database, right? And then what you do the people start searching for the keyword from the uh, from the main page and it tries to uh, okay the searching happens frequently from the database and how this is very efficient because of the learning right the, the learning from the data or understanding from the data is being done properly so now if the database on the other hand if the database is updated then understanding can also be updated so uh, if the database keeps on updating then our understanding also should get updated right overall this uh, intelligent search algorithm can be divided into two stages stage number one is learning or understanding the database it is called as cognition so the dictionary meaning of cognition is learning right learning uh, and in the stage two is about the searching the key right it is called the recognition so it is called the rec recognition means re um, uh, recalling recalling what you have learned so cognition and recognition so now given set of um, uh, elements in the array right first what we will do is that we will cog we will do cognition and then in the second stage we will do recognition recognition is searching but before searching we have to learn from the database learn from the elements so that is the cognition so let us see how it can be done now since the uh, okay since this is an uh, here now if you see that the elements here right uh, since the uh, here the element the the positions right are i represent the positions 
k is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and the respective elements are l equal to 12 18 22 26 28 30 32 34 what i do is that i in the matlab there is a scatter plot so you can use this or you can map it you can take your um, you can take a sheet and then simply you uh, you write the uh, positions right the position numbers on the x axis and the element value on the uh, y axis right the elements the value on the so this L will be on the Y axis and this K will be on the X axis. So now if you plot these values, then you will get see at position number 1, 12 will be here, 18 will be here, 22 will be here, 26 will be here, 28, 30, 32 and 34. Now, since the elements are in the sorted sequence, right, they are in the sorted sequence. Now, uh, let us recall our high school mathematics where what we have done is that um, we have uh, we have fit a regression line, we have fit a line passing through these points, right? We have fit a, uh, a you know, what you call the a linear regression, we have done it. So same idea, what we'll do is that we will learn a line from these particular points. So the learning is the line y equal to mx plus c. So now, if we see here, hence it is an, uh, okay? So hence, it is possible to fit a best line, uh, best line to pass through these points, right? It is possible to fit a, a best line to pass through these points, then uh, it, it is called the linear uh, regression. It is called the linear regression. The equation to the line is y equal to mx plus c, we already know. So hence, where m and c are the constants obtained by the linear regression and y represents the content or the element value and x represents the location value so y represents the content or the element and x represents the location so during search what what we supply we supply the element to be searched whereas we want so y is supplied and we want x x represents the location so we want to find the location in this now if we closely see um, this particular line so we have fit a regression line onto these eight points and we have obtained a regression line y equal to 2.9762x plus 11.8571. This is the equation of the regression line which we have obtained. And this is what is the learning which we have done from this data, right? We have done learning. And now the second stage, so learning stage is complete. Now the second stage is the searching stage or the recognition stage. So here the given search element, which is the key corresponds to y in the equation y equal to mx plus c, hence x gives the most probable location of the key. So y equal to mx plus c, I will little bit modify uh, this equation, rearrange this to get x. So x is equal to y minus c divided by m, which is the most probable location is given as key minus c divided by m. So key is the value which I supply, I want to search minus c value and m which is already learned from the previous stage. So now let us take some example here. The array elements are given here and the, the learning that is the uh, equation of the regression line is already given y equal to mx plus c okay where um, m is 2.9762 and c is 11.8571 so now let the key is to be searched is 22 okay so the most probable location equation i will take it again so key minus c divided by m which is 22 minus 11.8571 divided by 2.9762, which comes around 3.4, right, is almost rounded up to third location. So here we see that 22 is, when we supply 22, we say, we, we are able to say that it is exactly at the location number three. So that's really a magic, right? We have really achieved this in a constant time. So here this algorithm lands on location number three, and in this case, the element is found in the first search itself. So it is almost like a kingfisher we did it, right? And now let us see some, uh, some, some more uh, variations in this particular algorithm. So now here we supply 22 and through this linear, uh, through this uh, linear regression line, we obtain that it is at the location number three here. And now let us take the second case. So second case where key element y is equal to 31. Okay, y is equal to 31, but 31 does not exist inside there. Let us see how much time we, how much uh, search, right, we have to do to get 31. Now, again, 
bring back the most probable location equation q minus c divided by m so 31 minus 11.8571 divided by 2.9762 which comes approximately 6.4 so it is rounded up to 6 so now here 31 it says that is maybe around sixth location okay so sixth location here it is 30 so it lands on the location 6 and in this case the element is not found in the sixth location but tells that the next stage is an up search stage okay it gives us a hint because this at the position number 6 the element is lesser than the key element right it is 30 is less than 31 so it says that if if at all the element exists then it should exist after that right it cannot be before that so what would happen is that so search in the seventh location now i start searching on the seventh location tells that the element is not found because at seventh location the element is 32 and uh, uh, so 32 is greater than 31 right 32 is greater than 31 so the element is does not exist so here what we have accomplished we have said we are able to say that the element is not found inside the array with only two search first landing at the sixth location and then getting the idea that we have to move upward and then we go to seventh location and seventh location we find that element does not exist right so here we have what we have done we have we, we had the key element 31 right we, with the help of the regression line we we came to sixth location and we found out that in sixth location the element was not there then we again went up to right forward search and in the seventh location the element was greater so now the element is not found let us take the another case where key element is y equal to 25 okay the key element is 25 the most probable location key uh, key minus c divided by m we apply in the same manner and then we find out that 25 is at location number 4 okay location number 4 so location number 4 what is there in location number 4 it is 26 but at 26 is greater than 25 right 26 is greater than 25 so what does it tell it tells that the element if it all exists then it exists below that right you have to go downward search right you have to go downward search so lands on location 4 and in this case the element is not found in the fourth location but tells that the next stage is the downward search so i will search i will search in the third location search in the third location tells that the element is not found only two searches are made in this way yeah, to say that element is not found only two search landing on the fourth position and then comparing the value of that um, element uh, element right at that position with the key and understanding that element is the key element is smaller than that and again moving up to location l minus one that is the third location and in the third location the element is still lesser than this 25 that means the element does not exist right so that is the idea so now let us try to summarize the entire algorithm so here get the most probable location l right so get the most probable location l l is got by that equation y equal to mx plus c where x represents the location l approximate location l so now i have got l so if a of l is equal to key then element is found right successful search else if a of l is greater than the key right if a of l is greater than the key then what i understand i understand that i have to do downward search so then l becomes l minus one and if a of l is equal to key then element is found if um, else if a of l is less than key then element is not found else you continue right so this is the case where a of l is greater than the key and here is the case where key is greater than the a of L. So in that case, what I understand is that I have to do upward search. So upward search would happen by incrementing the counter, which is L equal to L plus one. And if A of L is equal to key, then element is found. Else if A of L greater than key, then element is not found. Else you continue. Right? So this is the overall algorithm and um, you, you can analyze, right? So the best case uh, for this, the best case search is almost a constant time. It is omega one. What would be the worst case? The worst case search should be logically close to omega of one, right? It should be uh, logically closer to omega because to say that it is unsuccessful search, okay, we have taken only two search, so it is almost very very less than n, okay. And how to prove this? So the left or the right deviation that we get when the most probable location is computed should be proportional to the deviation in the best fit from the 
true values right so we must understand right we must understand that a regression line is approximate okay a representation of the points right of the uh, of the elements which we take so the search space right the search space the number of search which depend upon uh, it is it is dependent upon the deviation in the best fit line from the true values so now in this case so we'll see that the first in the first element to find the first element the deviation is more if you can see that the second element is almost at the equation right so here the deviation is almost zero like i can say whereas in the third element there is a small deviation right the search space is smaller and here the search space for the uh, fourth element is little bit bigger similarly it is smaller it is almost for the fifth uh, sixth element is almost on the line that means you will land up exactly on that element similarly on this seventh element and the eighth element right so this deviation in the uh, regression in the fitting in the uh, during the uh, fitting of the line is very important to um, uh, means that decides the search space right for the algorithm so can we further improve the average search time it is can we decrease the worst case is it possible to decrease the width of the search space for any key so all these questions need to be answered perhaps yes so how can we further improve this uh, search space right for these eight points we yeah, it is possible if the regression is of the second order so if you take a second order instead of the first order or even higher order if you take then it is possible for us to get almost constant time for worst case but right there is a problem with this there can be a disadvantage so when you solve the uh, second order that is the here it is quadratic equation y equal to x square plus bx plus c right here you will get two roots so here you will get two roots and which means the two probable locations out of which one has to be invalid so now again this is further headache right so this becomes a further work which one is to, uh, correct which one is which one is invalid right so all those things which you have to do so that is why we do not consider right when we go on higher order the complexity increases so can we reduce the computing um, uh, okay uh, this is complexity during the stage of understanding the database is it possible to reduce the complexity while learning right understanding the database yes how it is possible instead of using all the elements in the data set for regression a sample subspace can be used for cognition for deriving the line of regression this means that for example there are 100 elements are 100 elements in an array okay which is given to you so instead of learning with all 100 elements you can take 10 elements you can take 20 elements you can take 30 elements and fit a regression line right so that would reduce the learning time this would approximate this would approximate the line of regression therefore average search space may become little bit wider so the uh, the drawback would be that the search space would be become little bit wider if you use the lesser number of elements so now an important analysis which could be done with this algorithm right is that finding the average search space width finding the average search space width by taking number of samples used to learn the regression line right so let me take 10 percent let me take 20 percent 30 percent so on right and let me take 100 percent elements and then see what is the average search space so this would be a very interesting graph to look into so is it possible to go for is it possible to go for a piecewise linear regression than fitting a single line so instead of fitting a quadratic curve the idea would be that um, right the second order it would be that uh, to fit a single uh, first order line right for a first order in a piecewise linear regression fashion right so uh, we can use a piecewise linear regression factor uh, regression line for the data right so it can be like this right so it can be the content is so instead of fitting one regression line you can fit multiple uh, lines like right? multiple regression lines and uh, this would be uh, much more easier so this can also be tried try to okay so the interesting questions would be that profile on a data set to get the best case worst case and average computing time is cognition linear regression omega o algorithm or a theta algorithm derive an exact expression for computing time and carry out the detailed study on regression based search and compare the performance with the binary search so all these things um, you need to do um, in your assignment or in your examinations right so thank you very much